point fingers at anyone on my staff and I always say that hey if something went wrong it's because of my fault because I always believe that when the fish stinks it starts from the head and if I'm the head I'm stinky <laughs> My parents were refugee. Um, they left the war um, the late 70s from Laos and they migrated to Argentina. It was really poor. Um, a lot of us suffering from, uh, you know, not having shoes to go to school, um, going to bed uh, a little bit hungry, or, you know, we would have to walk miles for water. <laughs> so I wasn't really clean when I was little, by the way. <laughs> We were learning Laotian at home with our parents, but going to school we would have to speak Spanish. Um, and our, let's start by our last name, is extremely long, so in school they will make fun of that. Um, also they will make fun of the fact that um, we were in a refugee camp. When I turned 15, um, I dropped out of school because I think that I wanted to help my family out and I remember working 60 hours a week for $300 a month and I was underpaid because I happened to be so young, like it's not even legal to work at 15. Hola Marcia, ¿qué pasó? Esto llegó al nuevo. A ver, ¿y cuánto cuesta? Ah, ¿ya le puso el ticket? Ah, mm. oh, sí, esa es la única que había de ti. Aside from making sure the clothes is being steamed and sent out in boxes, she's amazing. She makes us lunch coffee and she always makes sure that when we work really, really hard, that we put food in our tummy and like a good cup of coffee so we can go on with our day. Um, she's been around with us for the past four years and we consider her all here as an auntie more than anything else. My first few jobs in the United States were under the under the table. Um, I've done everything from cleaning apartments to wrapping chocolates. It happened when I moved to Connecticut. I spoke a little bit of English. It wasn't a lot, but it was to get by. But I also knew like selling skill and I also knew customer service. So I got hired for a company called Express, which is a huge, comp huge company now. And I was so determined and I always I always like, they give me a goal every day and I'm gonna meet those goals. They're telling me that I need to sell $500 an hour. I'm gonna sell $500 an hour. I don't know how I was gonna do it, but I, I used to do it. So I moved to New York in 2008. I remember I had $200 in my pocket. I brought my first metro car so I can move around to look for a job, uh, for, to jump to place to place. And then, you know, the rest of the money I saved it just to eat every day. Um, I eat a lot of dollar menu, believe it or not. <laughs> and my first job was Club Monaco in Queensboro Plaza. I always wanted to work in Midtown, more in Manhattan. And uh, finally, I got two months later, I got a call from Burberry. I felt that I've always been so ambitious and I've always worked so hard and I just like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put all my time and energy to creating someone else's dream, why can I do it with my own dream? It's a scary one because you never know if you never ever gonna get paid again. I come from a place where like it's okay if we didn't eat, you know, like it's it's some it was normal for me, you know. So I was fine with that if I take the risk of like, you know what, I'm gonna get the salary cut, but I'm gonna wake up every day doing the things that I love. And that's when the decision came and and, and I started my first business, which is Modalistas. We went from a 100 square foot kiosk in the limelight to a 4,000 square foot first floor takeover, which was amazing to see um, as I was growing and Monica was growing and our business was growing and I was there from day one. I knew she knew that there was something different and bigger in store and she told me about her vision. And she goes, how do I get 20 or 25 girls to try it on? Because I know that so many more girls would be buying this dress. At least a fifth of all the girls trying on the dress will buy it. She's like, let me ship this dress all across the nation and let me get it to, into their hands and they will buy it. So um, we started in her living room and we started building this website.
I spent the past eight months to build Moda Box. And our mission is the same, you know, making sure every person that we touch looks and feels amazing. Whether she is 26, whether she's 40, whether she's a mom, whether she's an executive, um, you know, and that's what our vision is about. Starting your own business is not something easy to do. Uh, especially investors, they say that we look for people that are gonna build no matter what, with or without my money. And I think that that's the first attitude you should have. If you can create something from nothing, it's a good attitude to have to start with. And you know, I think that like, I know it's hard because you need money to make money, but I think that um, you shouldn't be stuck with only one source of funding. I think there's so many different way of source of funding. Um, you know, I think I took tons alone. I maxed out every single credit card I have because I truly believe in what I'm doing. And if you truly believe in what you're doing, you have to sacrifice yourself first in order for some other to follow you. It's not easy, but you have to be creative. And a, a real entrepreneur will find a way to make it happen. I don't think you're ever gonna feel a point in your life where you're like, I reached the top of the mountain and I finally arrived. I think that you're gonna reach the top of the mountain and you're gonna look back and then you're gonna say, okay, can I go any higher than this?